look at that. It just collapses into itself, and once again, it is ready for storage. <laughs> Welcome back to another Jesse Gillette tutorial. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to turn that multi-ton ocean liner you got lying around into a flat pancake to save some space. So yeah, let's get into it. Now, what you're going to want to do is get a welding torch and start going at it on the ship. And you may notice that it may be a bit difficult, but that's why I'm here to help you out. So let me teach you how to actually get this ship down to pancake size. So first, what we're going to want to do is build a nice flat level plane to put our ship on. So just with the terrain tool, you can build a nice flat level space there for us to lay the ship on, and then we can flatten down to pancake size. So let's move the ship up. And as you can see, it is very rigid. It is not gonna go anywhere. So we need to melt it down and make it flat. So let's go ahead and let's go into our options setting to make sure that we can melt the ship down in literal seconds. So in the other tools tab, you wanna go to heat blaster and you wanna raise up the radius and the heat all the way to the max level. Now that that's set, I think we can go ahead and start melting this down. So with our heat blaster, this should be pretty easy. As you can see, the Olympic is flattening in size. Look at that. Now you've got plenty of space to add in your other ocean liners or cruise ships. And it is that easy. We can actually do it with multiple other vessels. But as you can see, if I return the water back, you'll notice that the ship starts to cool down and then you'll have a nice flat level ship to put in your collection. It once again saves space, makes it super easy to store as well. Now one thing I would be a little bit concerned about is ships that are made out of wood or have lots of wood inside of them. That may be a bit of a problem. I'll demonstrate with this ship here. We've used it multiple times and I'll show what happens when you try to compress this ship into a pancake. And as you can see there's lots of fire. I mean it does melt down pretty nicely but the wood has to burn away first. You can see it's supported by the wood frames and that makes it very difficult to melt down. And this should take some time, so you wanna be patient if you're gonna be melting down a ship with lots of wood inside. Now, in real life, it would most likely incinerate in seconds, but here, things are a little bit different. Anyways, as you can see, everything is now starting to break apart, melt down the bow is pretty much pancaked at this stage. Now you really want to get it up to a temperature where the whole thing glows white. That means that it's ready to go, it's ready to melt down, and by that point it's probably already melted down into the shape you want it. So there we are. As you can see, it looks fantastic. The ship is now no more and um, is now actually ready for storage. So there we are. Now you may be wondering, what about really big builds? Well, don't worry, we can melt those down too. And it works really well. So as you can see, we can really compress the ship down and it just falls into itself very nicely here. So you can see it's all starting to melt down and look at that, it just collapses into itself and once again, it is ready for storage. All right, so there we are, as you can see, it is no more and once again, if you just wanna cool it down, just put it in the water and there you are, wow. Um, is it just gonna fix itself? Oh no, it's just a ball of metal at this point. So um, yeah, what we've created there, it's probably one of the worst monstrosities I've ever seen in my entire life. Now you may be wondering, does it work on the good old Titanic? Yes it does, and I'll show you here. Now I would recommend that you start melting the ship from top down, because that gives an even flow across, and it helps it melt down very nicely. So as you can see, we start with the funnels, the bow, the stern, and then the center bit. So it is pretty even there, and it just melts down very nicely. And I'll tell you, this is a great tool for keeping your workspace clean. I know a couple of you out there have got those multi-ton ocean liners sitting on your desk and they can take up a lot of space. So when you melt these down, you can just put them away. Don't have to worry about them. And there they are. They're just uh, perfectly put away there. They may not retain their perfect shape afterwards, but you don't really have to worry about that that much. I mean, the ocean liner is put away and you don't really have to worry about it. Now some may ask, can I do this without any terrain underneath? I would warn against it because watch what happens here. So as we melt the ship, it sinks into the water. It has nothing to sit on. And that means that there may be some problems. Things will flood. Things will have a difficult time completely melting down. You can see that, look at how this area cools. That is not gonna work whenever you're trying to flatten down your ocean liner or battleship. 
it just won't work and it starts doing weird stuff like that i mean you don't want a demon forming in your ship that's just awful and look at that it's already starting to grow some arms there and it's just awful you'll probably have to get an exorcist or something and just to reiterate as you can see here we have a steamer here and when we do it in the water we melt the ship down turn it into molten mode you'll notice it's fine for a little bit but then those demons come out of the walls and it just turns into a big mess. You really don't want it. So I would go to the effort, put in a bit of a terrain and then melt down your ship and let it cool while it's on flat terrain. Because once again, you don't want demons coming after you. Now there is another way of doing it. And this will be the last way I show you how to do it. But this is melting the ship turning it into pancake mode or molten mode well in water but with some terrain underneath now i still think that this is a bad idea but we'll try it and we're going to use the great eastern as well so as you can see as we melt down the great eastern we're going to start noticing some problems right away or we may notice some problems right away so you can see the great eastern compresses very nicely it is already turned into a pancake there but you'll notice as it starts to cool those demons are going to start coming out things are going to go wild and then it's going to flood and then it'll sink to the bottom. I think it's a little unnecessary, but you can do it if you want to. Um, you'll notice that things will start to freak out. You can see things shaking a little bit, but uh, we're just going to keep this molten for a little bit here. So as you can see, things are melting down nicely. And actually, I thought it was going to freak out, but no. Looks like everything is okay so far. Well then, I guess we have disproven the myth that uh, melting your ship in water oh no it's happening as you can see as it's cooling those demons are coming out it's starting to shake it's getting violent call the exorcist things are going a little wild not as wild as just melting it in water but you can see that it is shaking and going a bit violent there but not to worry you can easily solve this by burying it so as you can see that should solve the problem give it a minute and then wait as it cools down Oh no, um, it's rising from the grave. Okay, now would be a good time to call the exorcist. Well then folks, I hope you found this video useful. Um, and also, happy April Fools. And uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and a comment. And I'll see you next time guys. Goodbye.